Hi everyone, this is Simon from Go Wireless. Welcome to the Go Wireless podcast. I am joined today by Luke and James from Meraki. So I'll pass over to uh, Luke and James to introduce themselves. So uh, who are you? What is your role at Meraki? And uh, yeah, go from there. Sure. All right, I'll kick off things. I'm Luke. I'm the New Zealand product sales specialist. Uh, I've been at Meraki now for about three years into my service. Um, so prior to New Zealand, I used to look after South Australia as well as Antarctica and some other random patches. So, um, yeah, I've been dealing with the New Zealand guys for about two years now and absolutely loving life. And James, I'll let you introduce yourself, mate. Thanks for that, Luke. So my name is James, currently working at Meraki for the past two and a half years now and working as an account development representative for Australia and New Zealand. So I've got the whole of Australia and New Zealand looking after the, the leads and all the good things from, you know, from everything, from any source. So, yeah, really enjoying it. And I'm glad to be here, Simon, to, to be on this podcast. Cool, yeah. I uh, really appreciate your time for joining me. So uh, for those who I don't know, so uh, both of you guys are in New Zealand, correct? That's yeah, correct, yeah. Correct. So are you both, both in the same city Sydney. or Sydney? James, you're yeah. in? Yeah, both, both in the same city. Um, I think um, Luke and I are about about an hour between where we live from each other, but uh, we both make our trips to the city for work. Well, not now, nice. obviously. <laughs> nice. So what's, um, I guess, probably the, the main topic on everyone's uh, minds at the moment is what's it been like working from remote a bit more now? Because obviously your COVID situation is quite a bit different to where we've been in New Zealand. So what's that like been for you guys? Yeah, it's, it's been... Um... It's, it's been interesting at first it was like a bit of a novelty like you had the odd day here and there work from home and it was brilliant you thought oh, you've got more time for yourself etc but i think james correct me if i'm wrong but what month are we in now maybe seven or six oh, or something mate no i think even double digits i feel like it's 10 months almost you know like really what are we in november right now yeah actually i think you're right i can't even count anymore that's how long it's been <laughs> yeah so it, it comes with its challenges right but um yeah, the, the main thing is just interacting with your work colleagues and stuff because a lot of, uh, mm. especially in a sales-based environment, a lot of it's about bouncing off, I guess, each other's energy and stuff. Thankfully, last week, we actually came back to the office for the for the first week, so it's good to catch up with the guys. But primarily looking after New Zealand virtually anyway, it's, it's been a lot of it's mm. on WebEx and, and facing calls. But the, I guess the main factor I'm missing at the moment is just speaking to my customers face-to-face -face with partners, et cetera, and, and yeah, really trying to spread the Meraki message in country but unfortunately I think mm. Jacinda will hold us back for a few uh, months yet by the looks of things. Yeah yeah we're um, where I am in Christchurch there's another couple of cases that have just been reported um, within a oh, hotel yeah. so we'll see how that goes I guess. How's it been for you James? Oh mate look I think similar story with Luke I think uh, the first couple of months it was like yes you know I'm finally out of the office and here I am working from home I've been thinking about this and how can we actually make this happen and um, because uh, yeah my role is purely just outbound and inbound through the office it kind of felt like a real good uh, um, you know, way to just see if I can continue to work as well I was as, as, as I was in the office uh, but then I don't know, the, the next onward couple of months, it was kind of like, well, where's this social interaction? And I think for me, I didn't even have an office at home. It was just trying to find those ways mm. and there's areas at home to really get myself motivated and keep starting, you know, and, mm. and keep myself active and to keep calling. And I'm, I went from places from like inside the house to outside the house to other rooms. And I finally situated mm. myself in a spare room, which I don't know why I didn't think about in the first place. Um, and um, yeah, here I am every day and now just sort of building out, you know, routine based stuff to get myself out of the, you know, my seat uh, to, to yeah. break away from um, just focusing on the screen because now I don't have any distractions around the office. You know what I mean? It's just in my room now in this in this yeah. office room. But um, look, it's been interesting. I think um, Meraki, especially during this, uh, you know, this pandemic and this global outbreak, uh, we've been. I'd say more active uh, in conversations and more, re uh, you know, reasonable in um, some 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 businesses' use cases as well. Uh, I'd say, and um, look, it's it's been a great journey. I think still, I, I don't want to say that um, I want to go back into the office yet, but you know, mm. what Luke said, temporarily temporarily seeing some people 
was uh, was was definitely worth you know having those conversations and um, uh, just felt good to be back to to speak with those guys. Nice, yeah. Did either of you have to do like any upgrades at home in terms of networking or getting a coffee machine or anything like I did? Coffee machines definitely paramount to having a successful yeah. work from home environment. Um, the internet definitely had to be upgraded as well because my mm -hmm. partner, she works for Dropbox and she's very similar right. to me, whereby we're both uh, actually into New Zealand, funnily enough, as well. So we're both calling right. the same customers, um, but when both of us are on a video call, when I was previously on stuff like ADSL, as an example, it would just literally mm -hmm. fall apart. So um, upgrading that to MBN as we've got out here, that's helped out a lot. But yeah, it's not quite business grade just yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything for you, James? Uh, mate, to be honest, um, I'm still living off my uh, black coffee, you know, the powdered ones. Um, and nice. uh, that's about it. Uh, in terms <laughs> of like the office environment, to be honest, mate, I've only just got a one screen laptop and I've been mm -hmm. I've been thinking to myself that I'll be getting a new monitor because at work we have two dual screens and normally when mm -hmm. I work in you know just in, at, at home with my home computer I've got either a dual screen or a widescreen monitor but here I am working mm -hmm. on a laptop with a small screen and it's been nine to ten months and I'm thinking oh should I get these dual monitors or should I get a new monitor at this point I'm just like you know what, I'll just live with it but um, yeah the only upgrade I've had is my own area of a room to uh, work in without any sort of distractions. So here I, here it is. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so I've got a bit of an agenda written down, so uh, we'll make our way through some of the questions. So uh, you've already, oh, actually, I guess you've already answered what your roles are at Meraki. So probably first question would be, why Meraki? I guess yeah, from a customer guess... standpoint, as well as from, from your roles, I guess. Yeah. So. I guess I'll start and James can obviously follow up from that. So prior to working for Meraki, I worked in a similar role to yourself, Simon, as a partner um, back in the UK, as you can tell by the accent, which still wasn't evading me. Um, and in that role I previously had, I sold a lot of products, and that was from HP to Dell to uh, Ubiquiti to Meraki and a whole multitude. And to summarise, there was not one product which excited my customers more to sell than Cisco Meraki. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason behind that is, is just that intuitive interface, which is really simple to, to use and getting that value proposition to customers is, is very easy to present. Um, and there's this model with Meraki as well, where we do see, try and buy with, with other vendors that's, that's few and far between. So the fact that I could show the customer what the dashboard looks like, I can then send them some trial kit for them to plug in and get a feel of it for themselves. And then from there, it just progressed into an order. Um, so the key, the key messaging, I guess, behind why Meraki is just simplifying IT um, and enabling IT managers to get on with stuff that's more important than configuring a network through CLI, as an mm. example. Yeah, Luke, that's, that's, that's an awesome you know, reason why you chose Meraki. And I think just following on that, Mine's a little bit different. Um, I um, studied a Bachelor of ICT in networking, and I actually worked in uh, an organization doing tech support and junior system admin. And uh, I got to see, you know, what configurating, you know, configurating um, switches and uh, access points look like from a university level. I mean, not very much mm -hmm. of what it actually could do, but, you know, just being on CLI and, you know, remembering all these codes and stuff, and so I worked in this organization that actually had Meraki. Uh, I only had Systems Manager at that time, but uh, just being able to see the uh, usability in the, uh, the um, dashboard itself on what you can actually do, I was like, oh, this is quite interesting. And then so I worked in this organization for, for about a year and a half and then worked uh, in another organization, this, which was in a government uh, agency. And I thought to myself, um, when I saw the opportunity for Cisco Meraki, I was like, hang on, I know a little bit more about Cisco Meraki uh, because in my junior sort of IT, IT role. And again, it's just about that not needing to configure uh, switches and hardware using CLI, remembering all this code when everything's in front of you from a dashboard view. And from an IT admin perspective, when you're able to do that from any location, um, from any device, um, and, and seeing that visibility and control, that's where it ticks a little bit for these guys to save them time and money and effort. So um, that was a real driver. I think 
being able to see the difference from uh, an IT person who's sort of studying IT, did a bit of networking, the Cisco brand, blah, 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 and actually seeing the functionality of the dashboard of Meraki, how, make, how they make it so simple uh, from, that, from that aspect. And I think there's a lot of key things that Luke did mention about, you know, scalability, uh, zero touch provisioning, um, automatic, you know, firmware updates and upgrades. Like these are all powerful stuff when you can wake up in the morning and don't have to go to the office to, to do these things. Um, when you've already go to, when you go to the office, those are things already done and your boss is like, well, what's going on? Uh, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's a couple of key things there. I think I kind of look at it as a, a way from the IT admin perspective to the operation perspective and how you can really just dive into these things very quickly. And I think that's the focus of Meraki, you know, really, um, simplifying the technology so that you can focus on, um, things that are more, more important to the business. Mm. No, I can definitely attest to that having played with the gear before and um, particularly your new mobile app that just came out or the new refresh of it. Everything looks all nice and simple, easy to use. So that's been great. Yeah, nice. um, I guess for for the listeners who maybe don't know uh, what Meraki does, I guess you've kind of mentioned that you do things like system manager and uh, network infrastructure, but what kind of uh, products does Meraki supply? Yeah, so Meraki is a platform. Uh, there's lots of products which fit in the platform, um, but essentially what you're investing in is the dashboard, uh, which we've been referring to a few times. So where the whole concept of Meraki came from was actually a bunch of students from Massachusetts, um, and they had a project called RoofNet. So what they were doing there is they were putting access points on the top of roofs. Um, so the whole concept of having this cloud managed dashboard is they didn't want to have to manually configure these access points on a, a, a touch by touch basis. So they created this dashboard um, and then they realized, okay, access points is just the start. Then they added switching as well as our firewall and SD-WAN appliance. And at that point, we only had Meraki as uh, our logo. And then what Cisco tend to do is when they see a company going pretty well and, and cr crushing the market, uh, they throw a load of money at you. They end up acquiring us. Um, so it was about 1.2 billion at the time. So it then went from an AP, a switch and a firewall. And now we've got cloud managed CCTV cameras, uh, mobile device management, as James touched on, as well as some cloud application monitoring as well. And then the newest product on the line, which I think we'll get into later actually, is our uh, mm -hmm. Meraki IoT sensors, which are really cool. And it, it just gives you a bit of a sense of perspective, I guess, as to what direction we're looking to go to as, as a business. So. Um, yeah, there's loads of products under the portfolio, and it's just giving you that one place to manage all of them, as opposed to actually being upskilled in lots of different vendors and, and making it a bit tiresome for IT managers. Mm. No, definitely, I do like the one thing that uh, Meraki does well in the dashboard is that it uh, grows with you as you add the devices. So I like the fact of that as you add the camera, it adds the camera functionality into your dashboard, and as you add the wireless, the wireless appears. So that way, we have a few customers who uh, maybe get a product and are presented with a thousand different options and they're a bit, you know, a bit scared of it. They're like, oh, I'm not going to play with all those features. I only want this kind of select view. So it's quite nice that it, uh, bit by bit introduces you into, into the platform. Um, yeah. So I guess you just mentioned there, the, the new IOT stuff. So maybe tell me a bit about that. So you've just released IOT sensors, I believe. Yeah. So. The, the product line is called the Meraki MT, so I'd encourage you to get on our website. It was Meraki's worst kept secret, so we kept it on our website for two weeks before actually launching it. So I was getting hit up with loads of questions. What do these sensor things do? Yeah. So um, I saw a few things on LinkedIn main... saying about the embargo is not coming yeah. through and people talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it uh, tends to be the Meraki way. It's that they kind of tease you with some information and don't really go too mm -hmm. much into it. But um, so there's three sensors. So one of them is for uh, temperature monitoring. One of them is going to be for uh, water levels and humidity, mm -hmm. and then the other one's for opening and, and closing doors. So. At the moment, uh, we, we kind of foresee that the ideal setup for this may be in like a server cabinet as an example, but then you mm -hmm. can use them in stuff like manufacturing plants as an example. And they work in um, tandem with our Wi-Fi 6 access points or our MV line, which is our cameras. Um, mm -hmm. So how they interact with one another is the Bluetooth chips within them. So it just goes to show that we're not just focusing on the network now. We're now moving... I guess, wider outside of that and trying to move into the IoT space and, and working quite heavily within that Cisco ecosystem and what they're doing in the IoT side as well. 
Um, James, have you had much background into some of your customers being interested in IAT after the release? <laughs> you know what? Quite a couple, to be honest. And look, I think I need to scrub up my information on the MT, to be honest. <laughs> you know, it's still a, it's still a quite new uh, product for me to to really dive into. But if you know the listeners today, I'll list, you know want to hear more about uh, the MT uh, products, especially in New Zealand, definitely reach out to Luke Fode. Uh, who's obviously uh, in this call uh, and this conversation. Mm -hmm. I think Simon will provide his details as well. But um, yeah. yeah, no, definitely have had a couple of de uh, people. I've just been sending them to uh, the, the, the the website, but definitely use cases around the manufacturing and the server cabinets, you know, um, but focusing on that, you know, the future of technology uh, where Meraki is going, you know, just not focusing on the network, but the bigger scale. Mm. Yeah, one thing I do like about them is that they are quite simplified. Um, obviously, there's things like LoRa and you know NBIoT and kind of large scales, which definitely have their place. But uh, this looks like quite a nice little value add-on that uh, kind of adds on to your existing infrastructure through your Wi-Fi six access points and cameras. And you're not having to worry about programming or application servers or anything like that. You've already got the the dashboard there, so um, definitely we're looking forward to getting our hands on them and having a bit of play around with them in the office. So. Yeah, that'd be good, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. I guess one other thing that uh, for our listeners as well, that's quite different to maybe the products that they're using currently and Meraki uh, would be the, the idea of the licensed and unlicensed. So maybe tell me a bit about, uh, I guess, obviously Meraki licensing and, you know, what, why, why licensing? Yeah, so I guess there's a few elements to the, the license side of things. So the first thing primarily is going to be around the support you get with the product. Um, so with that license, you get 24 seven round the clock support. Um, and when, when we talk about for New Zealand customers calling through, uh, well, I used to be able to go downstairs and tap someone in support to see what was going on with the case, but unfortunately it's a phone call these days. Um, so the key thing here is whenever any of your product, if there's any fault for it, for whatever reason, even though there's like 99% chance it will be fine, um, we can send out an immediate replacement for any of those goods. Um, and you've got that direct contact line whenever you need uh, Meraki support. So that can be through calling or an emailing service as well. Um, but the, I guess the key value proposition behind it is when you're investing in the Meraki dashboard, you're obviously buying a product in day one, but then you're also getting all the product updates and changes throughout its licensing term. So I'll give you a perfect example. So one of them is our firewall appliance or the MX which is our biggest selling product in New Zealand. So previously the MX didn't used to have uh, SD WAN capabilities built into the box. Um, so this is an update which is pushed out into the cloud. So say you'd bought the MX on day one, you've just bought a firewall UTM device. Whereas maybe a year down the track, because you've got that license, we can then push out those SD WAN updates for no additional cost for you guys. Um, so you're kind of making a long-term investment into Meraki, which is nice, and you're opening yourself up to all of the updates which are pushed through the cloud. Um, when I'm demoing every day, it's quite funny. I see a new tab kind of hit me for six sometimes. I'm like, what the hell is that? And you you jump in there and, and you'll see it's just a new feature which has been updated. So, um, yeah, it's, it's making that investment for now. You've got that 24-7 support, but it's also giving you um, assurance that the product you're investing in is going to evolve over that period of your licensing term as well. Yeah, that, that's pretty. That's a pretty good w way to sum it up, uh, Luke. I think support is obviously important. Um, I had numerous uh, customers and potential customers calling me about, uh, and the reason for call is about their support for their existing providers um, that they'd not be able to hear back from them. And I think, whilst you've got a Cisco Meraki account manager and the support team, you can also leverage the account managers to escalate that to their, um, you know, to to find more information about their case and. You know, yeah, like Luke said, they they usually they are uh, one level bef uh, below us in the building, but we're we're able to also ping them as well, um, and and you know just ask you know questions uh, directly. I guess what's what's also included uh, in the license, um, being that it is a cloud managed dashboard, you can see complete configuration of all your assets, right? You can also do remote network management, uh, having full visibility of your end devices, your networks, uh, all the users. The one thing that I wanted to mention there is that zero touch deployment. So when you've got multiple sites and you're looking to scale up or even scaling down, um, you could easily uh, create a configuration template and apply that to all those sites. That obviously, they're quite similar. So 
we've we've got a great use case in Australia. Um, I'm not sure if to mention the name, but Australia Post, and they've um, you know been able to deploy what is it, a thousand sites or something within you know what typically would take months would you know more than a couple of months to to sometimes in weeks you know not, not a thousand but you know each site was delivered very quickly um i'll, I'll find that use case <laughs> i know it's you know a, a quick turnaround time because these configuration templates and also the other thing is that we've got 2fa you know with dashboard login ac access so we're also making you secure to uh, log into your dashboard and then one other thing there from from what luke said the firmware updates, uh, the features as they come, the investment that you get, it, it's 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 a long term play, um, to be honest. And as long as you keep that uh, valid license activated and renewed, um, you'll have whatever we just suggested now. Plus, I think there's more. We've probably missed out a couple of things as well. Yeah, no, definitely. It, this is very cool. I saw a few like the the different um, EMR licenses. So EMR being the wireless. So the what is it? The advanced security has the uh, umbrella integration as well, and I saw there's a new was it an SD WAN plus for the MX or something? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. so the the umbrella license is something which has come on quite recently, and the SD WAN plus license will include. Um, we had a product called Meraki Insight. So essentially, what it does is it analyzes your cloud applications and how they're performing. So use case for me at home, which probably isn't that business applicable, but I play Call of Duty quite regularly. Um, and then half the time I won't be able to connect into a game. So my immediate response is to call Telstra and give them effing and blinding their services rubbish. But then from something like Insight, as an example, we can actually go back to those Activision servers on, and actually see how their server base is performing. And it's the same thing in businesses, right? With Microsoft, if something was wrong with 365, we can diagnose that issue. So not only now are you talking just about your internal network infrastructure, you're talking about all the other cloud vendors you work with, so your Dropboxes, your Microsofts, et cetera. And it's funny you mentioned that licensing term as well. So you look at someone like Microsoft as a business, as an example, 365 is constantly on a yearly, a three-yearly, a five-year basis. So a lot of these cloud companies are moving to that licensing model. Um, it's just something that we're, we're probably going to have to get used to, unfortunately, going forward, or even that Netflix you're paying for every month, unfortunately, as well. Yeah, that's true. And I remember seeing an article like a year or so back about mentioning that you know, Windows itself may move to a subscription model rather than, you know, owning a Windows 10 license or something. So, yeah, crazy. Uh, cool. I guess um, another question for you guys in terms of um, we've touched at the start about, uh, you know, the, the change of working environment, you know, working a bit more from home. Um, have you seen a bit more uh deployment of the likes of say your z appliances or mx or mrs out the in the workplace and other a lot of people are having to work remotely and i guess you know how, how maraki can enable that for for your customers uh, securely even as well yeah for sure i think the z appliance is the the natural product which you which we've been selling a lot of so for those listeners who don't know what that z appliance is um it's basically like a portable vpn device so the use case uh, where I've found a lot of success in New Zealand is actually for some of the execs who are working from home more permanently. Um, so basically what we can do is bring SD-WAN feature sets to a household. So instead of your, your kids hammering your bandwidth on YouTube or whatever else, we can actually shape the traffic so your video calling is going to be optimized. Um, and you've got that secure VPN back into your headquarters, as well as you can employ some firewall rules at home as well. So it's giving you that office experience uh, back at home. But then, Simon, you mentioned Umbrella there before. That's been a, a massive selling point as well. So now users are connecting through at home. A, a massive IT bugbear is how are we going to secure this remote workforce because um, we don't know what they're accessing and it's going to be com company-sensitive data. So a product like Umbrella and MDM, as an example, that will be securing the devices that people are using um, as well as making sure that they're, they're not going to be downloading any malicious files, et cetera. So, yeah, two products there. One of them is going to be around connectivity, and the second one is going to be about securing the devices. Nice. Now we're definitely seeing a lot more of that kind of thing in, here in New Zealand as well. People yeah, having to work from home and kind of work around that thing. We've had a few, uh, particularly customers having to segregate traffic, um, you know, having to work in the same environment. So, you know, my wife and I were working at home from different environments. So. I mean, luckily, I was there for IT support for the whole time, so that was a bit of fun. <laughs> sure, part-time job was it a little bit? 
Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in my yeah. my lunchtime breaks, making it work. <laughs> she's yeah. um she's now still working from home as well, and uh, I've got the Meraki gear at home. So luckily, anytime throughout the day, oh, the Wi Fi's dropped, or why is my laptop not connecting anywhere? I can you know shoot it and have a bit of a look. So or get <laughs> <on> my toes. <laughs> um, I guess another question for you guys: What would be uh, your favorite tech that you sell at Meraki? What would be your favorite appliance or favorite piece of hardware? Um, I'm going to be like talk from a pretty biased perspective. So I've always been like really interested in, I guess, customer analytics as an example. So the network's like great. That's kind of what you expect though, providing people connectivity. So that's why when I started selling the cameras and the access points, you, you turn it from a conversation around providing your users wireless or whatever, just, and then you transform into how can you actually return an investment? So. Through the use of stuff like APIs, as an example, there's products out there like AWS Recognition and uh, Microsoft Cognitive Services. Uh, you can do some crazy stuff like facial recognition, as an example, which can be a bit of a scary rabbit hole for some businesses. But um, what, I'm actually working with a shopping mall at the moment, um, and what we're doing with them is we're analyzing the customers that come through the shopping mall, so whether they're male or whether they're female, um, how old they are, which is quite scary, the accuracy as well as well as what their emotional state which is coming into the shop. So were they happy and sad with their service? Um, and then from this information, what they're doing is they're creating targeted advertising. So say a, a male walks past, maybe put a generic male, like a Nike shoe as an example, or as a female, they'll then change the advertisement to something which they believe will be more female orientated for that group. Um, so it gets a bit, a little bit minority report, but um, yeah, it's, stuff like that I think is super exciting because you can actually make a tangible return on this investment, so it's not just the camera providing CCTV. You're you're actually providing some data as to where customers are moving and how they're interacting in shopping malls, as an example. What about yourself, James? Yeah, mate. Um, I'd, I'd I'd also say you know with with the product would be uh, the wireless actually the wireless APs. You know, whilst you can provide like what Luke said, a network with uh, Wi-Fi, for example, it's really the smarts that you can get out of it, the data that you can get out of these APs, these access points, um, and um, where you actually see this in like retail environments, what Luke was saying, you being able to sit to identify, you know, which, how many devices or how many people actually pass through a particular area, their location, where they actually move. Um, it's just these cool other things that, um, no other uh, IT, sorry, no other uh, vendor is actually doing. And then talking about those actual business outcomes, whilst you can only talk about, you know, guess Wi-Fi portal access or providing that Wi-Fi, great. But then really driving some more like sales for these people. And um, that's when, like you said, um, being able to have a bigger conversation in around uh, what we can actually do uh, for them. So APs, I, I definitely love talking about. And I feel like it's a lot more relevant in, um, you know, it's a good starting point for a lot of customers at this point of time, um, especially because it's just a simple device to, to, to operate as well. Nice. Cool. Um, I've got a question that I always ask all of my guests on the podcast. So uh, get ready for that. Uh, what is your favorite bit of technology overall? I have to think outside the box from the Meraki realm now. Um, yeah. Something which is really simple, which I, yeah, was completely out of the box, was one from, because I used to love going traveling as an example, and the, the app now that they used to have on Google where you could speak into something and it would directly translate it into, like, Mandarin or Spanish or French as an example, I used to find that like extremely powerful because when you're traveling around the world, that's the number one thing, which used to be the hardest thing to get around is speaking to people and translating into different languages, et cetera. But the fact now that off, yeah, we can immediately translate based on recognizing our voices and picking up all those weird and wonderful accents. I find that quite powerful how we can now communicate. So yeah, that's what off the cusp one that I can only think of. No, that's, that's a pretty good response, mate. I can't even think about one. <laughs> oh gosh. Simon, can you tell us yours, <laughs> your favorite technology? Yeah, probably iPhone. Like, I don't think I would 
you know, what am I supposed to do with these hands when I'm, <laughs> you know, sitting waiting for a bus, you know? Biggest <laughs> distraction, isn't people? it? That's weird, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I'd say it has to be, yeah, for me, it has to be iPhone. So, although well done on being the first guest to actually ask me, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I've got to put on a hold on this one. Have you, have you got any other questions first before I think about I mean, the iPhone's great. The biggest distraction mm. for me as well. I mean, mm. it, you know, takes these a place. It's, it's the single most thing that actually allows me to do multiple things as well. And like you would, you'd imagine mm. as well, kind of like the Meraki dashboard, you know what I mean? You can do so much from one location, but oh, <laughs> on your, nice. on the tips nice. of your hands. Um, <laughs> we might have to do another recording just for me to figure that one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a problem. Cool. And I guess um, to close up, we'll kind of be doing it the whole time, but um, for, for each of you guys, if you want to give maybe like a quick, you know, 30 second, one minute spiel about why, why should our customers choose Meraki? Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, as, as you mentioned, just one dashboard to manage everything. So from access points to cloud managed CCTV cameras, uh, don't believe everything a sales guy would say, because we're always going to say that Meraki is the best product. Just plug it in and see for yourself. So contact James or I. We'll send you some trial units if you like it and you get the value proposition that James and I evidently do, then go ahead and buy it. If not, we'll send you a shipping label and ship it back to us. So, yeah, it's, it's just experiencing that dashboard and, and realizing how quick and simple it can save you time and prioritize to other things in the IT realm as well. Yeah, absolutely. Reach out to Luke and myself uh, to learn more about Meraki. Absolutely try the devices, see what the difference between CLI versus web-based configuration looks like. See how much time, effort, and money you'd save on actually looking to configure these devices. Um, and yeah, we've got a whole realm of products from the Meraki security appliances to switching to APs to CCTV cameras. Reach out to us, we'll do a quick demo We'll get you we'll get you some equipment and um go from there <laughs> oh, yeah nice one thanks guys i really appreciate it um yeah so uh obviously uh, go wireless we are a meraki partner so don't hesitate listeners to reach out to me simon at go wi-fi i've obviously got luke and james's email here as well so if it's something you're interested do do sing out and uh, let us know so uh again thanks for your time and uh really appreciate you guys coming on for the podcast today